My name's Dylan. If you're new around here, I just put a PhD in physics on hold, create some fun things. So come check this out. Oh, it's a nice result. Oh, shit. So if you want to turn your car into a street car, how about a time machine? I, I promised you guys a time machine. It's as good as it's going to get, unfortunately, because I dropped out of that PhD. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I want to see these results. I haven't seen these. Sick. Let me show you AI my interior, which actually gives like photorealistic results. So I made these. These are my babies. If you ever click on these, right, you know how you've got the private option? You don't have to put your room or your car online. Right, and pretty much everyone is choosing this private option. So if it looks like you come here and it's the same pictures, it's because everyone's just choosing the private one. We get a lot of uses each day. It's going very well. And one more thing, I created Kel, which is the world's first post-quantum VPN. It's got post-quantum cryptography in it, right? And this stuff is gonna be very important going forward. A lot of countries at the moment, they're all really racing to try and upgrade their standards of encryption. And I was like, I'm gonna not do the business to business approach. I wanna try and do the consumer help people approach so that's enough of that only one great sci-fi show on television that's more science than fiction and i got on a dang spaceship just to tell you so the expanse one of my favorite shows i absolutely adore this show i really put off watching the final season for a while because i knew it was the final one i was so happy when amazon saved this show i've been a big fan for a long time yeah i have a lot of stories with the show it's it, it's special to me all right, and I agree. It's what it, you should read the books. The books are fantastic, and it is one of the most scientifically accurate shows out there. And it's not just a scientifically accurate show; it's a good story. About it. So, let's get technical. Uh, Kyle, this isn't a real spaceship. What? What? Are you kidding me? They got them for this YouTube video, dude. I did not expect that. That's crazy. Technically, we're on a set. Oh my god. Wow. I didn't expect that. So those are the two main actors and characters in the show. The people in it, the actors playing the characters, they adore the show as well. And um, when it got cancelled, what was it, like season four, they all like devised this plan. The actors devised this meticulous plan to like, um, you know, approach Jeff Bezos in person to try and convince him to get the show, you know, to on Amazon Prime reinstated. And they did. They managed it. Um, so a lot of respect. The actors, like, showing up for a YouTube video is just awesome. If you know me and my taste in science fiction at all, you know that I must be talking about... I love Kyle. The Expanse, a show that I've been telling you nerds to watch for <laughs> years. And that's because, in my estimation, no other show out there right now gets more science right... Oh, right gets more science right and does so in a way that's both clever and narratively interesting. Looks exactly like the helmets in the if show. If you haven't seen the show, the... The Martian helmets, right? No, they both have those. This is based on a series of novels by James S.A. Corey, which is the pen name for the writing duo of Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham. The book and the show is set in a near future, a few hundred years in the future, where humanity has expanded out into the solar system, establishing colonies on moons, space stations, and other planets. Even if you haven't seen Agreed. a single episode, I think it's pretty easy to prove Test. my point because the yeah, expanse avoids pretty much every major unscientific trope of science fiction, and that's just downright impressive. The first and most obvious thing that the show does right is correct for the one trope that everyone in the world knows. There isn't any sound in space. <laughs> I'd explain it, but I think he's going to explain it. Oh, damn. Am I meant to be reading? I missed that. Man, I love him. Oh, but no sound in space is easy to correct for. The Expanse is a lot more clever than that. One of my favorite examples is very early on in the show. Oh, what has pop culture told you would happen if your spaceship had a hole blown through its hull? That you'd be this is in like the first episode. across the room and maybe forced through the hole, right? Wrong. Spacecraft are pressurized for people, and so if you're filling a spacecraft you with get air, my you do so until you reach around 14.7 pounds per square inch, or atmospheric pressure, or thereabouts. Now, what would actually happen if you encountered a puncture with a differential pressure of about 15 pounds per square inch and basically zero PSI? Well, if you were pressed up against this hole, you probably 
oh, you'd probably get the worst and most painful hickey ever, and you'd probably get broken blood vessels and a big welt and everything like that, but your whole body would not be forced through this hole. You can handle 14 or 15 pounds per square inch on your hand. Mm -hmm. And while it's true that the air near this puncture in a spaceship will be moving very violently, like at the speed of sound, if you just moved a little bit away, you wouldn't feel much of anything. It's like expecting to feel a plug pulled at the deep end of a pool when you were at the shallows. And so in the expanse, when a puncture like this happens, a character calmly floats over to the puncture and then places a thin plastic binder like you'd so have in school over it. And there's actually been situations uh, on like the International Space Station uh, in spacecraft where this situation has happened. Not a human putting their like hand on it, but, um, you know, they, them just putting stuff over it to cover it. <laughs> uh, even recently, I'm you know, the... I haven't actually, I need to look into this because it was actually quite shocking, but it was really depressing what's happening with the Russian astronauts at the moment. Uh, there's some up in space and Russia's just kind of been like, um, you know, they don't know how they're going to, I think, get a couple of them down. I haven't read into this for a while. Does anyone know the latest on that situation? Because it was kind of terrifying. Basically, there was a leak in their thing and um, they couldn't find it, right? And so he was... The astronauts were desperately trying to find it. Um, but anyway, that's an interesting little thing that was recently happening, and I hope they're okay. That's it. The puncture is sealed. No flying across the room, no ship ripping explosion, because this is what would happen. And that's interesting. Another sci-fi trope that the... Ex of course, you know, you can theoretically think about these things, but you really got to experiment. That's the whole arbiter of truth and science, right? So, um, yeah, we, that's what we think would happen, and that should happen. But if you are a true scientist, you know, you can't say that's 100% what's going to happen. You're going to have to do it as well. Spance upends is space travel itself. Think of every space show you've ever seen and imagine a spaceship traveling towards a space station, say. How does it... Star Wars Episode Eight was it? You know, the sequel trilogy. I think this exact situation was playing out. Get there. Well, usually we see it depicted as the engines on thrusting away the whole time and then just stopping when it gets there. But if this was really to happen, because there's no air resistance or friction in space, if you were under a constant thrust the entire time, you wouldn't slow down at all. And when you got to the destination, you would have all of this built up speed and you would likely just smash into your destination, destroying it. And so what the expanse does and what you'd actually have to do for a maneuver like this is spend up to half your travel time turned around and thrust it. You don't have to turn around. You could just put an engine on both ends. That's not exactly a typical thing to do, but you know, you could build spacecraft in space, right? You know, that's not typical because you know, we launch these things from the ground. But if we ever get to this stage where we're traveling around the star, this would be a better option. What if you had like a uh, a spherical ball and you could somehow like apply a thrust in all directions that would be unique i don't think you could do that but there's a fun idea for a sci-fi story right the opposite direction to your travel to slow down by the time you get to your destination this takes cgi time and money and effort and this is something that almost no other sci-fi show does flip and burn baby flip and there are other shows that do it because, you know, they're written by people who actually know things. Not only are the space physics on point in this program, very few sci-fi shows really explore the effects of space on the human body in narratively interesting ways. Gravity always matters. The single molecule that makes you up has been under the influence of gravity since before you were born. At every moment, the Earth's mass is acting to... Wow, he actually wrote 9.81. Unlike most physicists who will just write 10 guilty pull you down towards its center with an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second every second but the earth's crust gets in the way and you feel this reactionary force as your weight every single thing about you has evolved to deal with this weight from your circulatory system to how your bones are structured and so it makes sense that if you were born in space or under a significantly different gravity your body might be different this is just one way of thinking about what gravity is. Obviously, if you know your physics, you'd know that's not general relativity. That's not how Einstein thinks of gravity. 
let's just ignore it for now because there's still mysteries there. We don't know how gravity, the force, um, you know, works on the quantum level. So there's a lot we don't know about gravity. Um, but this is not the the way we think about gravity using the one of the main pillars of physics we currently have, which is general relativity. It's just curvature of space time. Anyway. In the Expanse universe, humans born on Ceres, the largest object in the asteroid belt, are taller. And if you get one thing out of today, I want you to go watch The Expanse. It's it's really enjoyable. Okay, it's really really good. You should go watch it. Rankier as their spines expand in the third of a G that they live under, and they literally cannot handle the relatively crushing gravity of Earth. And because humans born into the militaristic Martian society live under 0.4G, they constantly train their bodies under simulated 1G Earth gravity because one day they know they might have to invade it and their bodies would have to deal with that. Oh, hey. There's so much cool stuff in the series where the Martians, right? The, the, you know, the little society uh, of people now being born on Mars, they come back to Earth and they can only be on Earth for so long. Uh, it's it's really, really, really enjoyable the, how accurate they try to portray it. But I would argue there's still some inaccuracies there um, and a lot of scientific speculation because we haven't done this yet. We don't know. Uh, like I was saying before, right? The arbiter of truth is experiment currently. So... You know, we need to we'd need to actually experiment and do this stuff before we really know. Like this constant experiments happening on the ISS, right, for stuff like this to see what's happening to our bodies. And we are constantly learning new things that we had no idea that you know what space is doing to our bodies. It's it's absolutely remarkable. Hey, hey, I'm not legitimate salvage. Hey, hey, back up, man. You can have sex in space and sperm seems to still work some which is it's kind of mysterious. So, you know, oh, gravity always matters, but maybe more consequential than a constant value for gravity is a. And and yes, they did the experiment. <laughs> if you're wondering how I know that, right, There's, there were there were experiments. Rapid change in its apparent magnitude. When you hear the term G-force, we're not really talking about a force at all. Rather, we're talking about how quickly you are accelerating or decelerating in relation to standard Earth gravity. So if nice. this is around 10 meters is per good second stuff. per second, if you suddenly start accelerating at 20 meters per second every second... That was me, Jeff. You got me. I did them. ...are now pulling around 2G, and there's a limit for how much a human body can take. To make interplanetary life really possible, Good, any ship is necessarily going to have to travel really, really fast. In the Expanse, very advanced engines provide a consistent 1G of thrust between destinations. This is to provide artificial gravity and weight on spaceships and also to build up velocity very, very quickly. But if they ever have to travel faster than this, the show lets you know in some clever ways. For example, the character that created the show's advanced fusion drive engines was actually killed by his creation because it kept accelerating and accelerating until his body got so heavy that his hands literally could not reach the controls and his body was shot off into space forever. Now that's accuracy! And have you ever been watching a sci-fi show like me and thought to yourself, gee, they're traveling at like warp six or whatever, and then they get to where they're going and they stop almost instantaneously and they're not wearing seatbelts and nothing happens. Wow, that's weird. Well, you could just hand wave this away with some kind of techno babble like inertial dampers or whatever. The Expanse truly embraced- I think that's fine though. I, um, you know, if you know enough physics, um, you can hand wave this stuff around. There are ways you could probably deal with that sort of stuff, um, you know, because we know general relativity is limited. But even with just general relativity, there are potential things in principle that you could create to, you know, sort of create some kind of like bubble uh, that's sort of like outside space time to, you know, do this warp speed stuff. Scene, something happens that I've never seen before on any science fiction television show. A ship with a single crew member is traveling at interplanetary speed and then encounters a device, a ring, that makes everything that passes through it slow way, way down. And instead of the crew member just shaking about his terminal and maybe beaming down to a planet or something like that, this happens. Accuracy! Oh! 
he gets turned into human salsa. <laughs> wow, there are a lot of knees in here. As you may have guessed by now, I love The Expanse for its dedication to accuracy, and I could go on with many more examples of the science that the show gets right, but I want to point out one thing that's very important. All of this care doesn't just show up on screen. It has to start from the bottom up, from the authors to the set designers to the prop makers to the showrunners to the cast, crew, and the actors themselves. And it's right there. You can see it. But don't take my word for it. Why don't we go ask them? Mm -hmm. our, our set designers, our, our prop masters, and our costume designers are all really committed to getting the details right. Sure. Um, and then you just have a lot of meetings where you talk about the way things would actually work and uh, sort of the, the physical requirements of, of every object. Uh, and then they work really hard to get the details right. Has there been a scene or dialogue that you can remember where there was a tension between accuracy and narrative and you had to go one way or the other? The, the thing that we always bump up against is, is, is travel time. Because in the books, we can just say it takes three weeks to fly to here. Sure. Uh, in a show, um, it's a really boring three episodes where all three episodes are just people sitting Still and waiting going. to get there. <laughs> Still going. Yeah, so, so you have to sort of, you have to imply the passage of time. Sure. Uh, without ever saying, three weeks ago when we left, yeah, you, yeah. you never want to do that. So um, that's always a tightrope walk. Of course, no space opera would be complete without some great players. And I have two actors from The Expanse with me, Dominique Tipper, Stephen Strait. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we're on Hi, a friends. Hello. We're Hi. on a lovely set here. I have some questions about being an actor and actress and then get that out onto the screen. I think the fact that it is so detailed and, and so like specific about the science makes it easier for us. Because, oh, how so? Well, I just feel like there's when there's more attention to detail, it gives us more stuff to work with. Sure. So, you know, it's we're not having to like do press and explain cruddy science to people. Sure, and you don't have to wonder like how you're supposed to come in on wires. <laughs> yeah, and if I'm like, what would this be like if we were actually in zero G, people aren't just going, just don't worry about it. I feel like I've become maybe how frustrated like people who know science have become with oh, really? Hollywood because I keep seeing things and I'm like, mm mm mm, they'd be, they'd be under thrust, the shit was under thrust, so there wouldn't be zero G. And like, I'm like, oh my God, I know, I, this is so annoying. You're a nerd now. The Expanse's commitment to detail Guy's so funny, man. Doesn't end at just the sets, of course. You have to make sure everything looks right and fit. This guy looks like he's in fucking. Who is that guy? Anyway, what, and... <laughs> what is going on right now? Okay, are we all cinched up and ready to go? We are cinched up and ready to go. You just please let us know if anything's uncomfortable or not where it's supposed to be. Try not to look like I'm favoring one side. Right? So this <laughs> is starting to reorient where I believe I am. It does feel like I'm <laughs> in some kind of different situation here, coming down towards the deck of the ship. <laughs> and I just realized if I pull my legs in a bit, I can even go more. Yeah, conservation of angular control. momentum. Yeah, this is just the conservation of momentum. Changing my moment of inertia here. Just spin around. Bit of Bob Ross there as well. When you're in zero G. Anyway, can you throw me back up? All right, here we go. Now I haven't experienced zero G. See you. Only in my dreams. Space. That's the end of the video. I loved that. That was fun. Hope you guys had a good time.